Did we have? Oh, there we go. I just want to make sure we have a laser pointer. Okay. Is that working? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, when I introduce you, I have to stand yep. like next to you. Yep. I'm going to pick it up there. Definitely one of the shorter bios. Well, I'm a simple person. I'm a very simple person. Yeah, I used to be the anatomy the theology lab technician. Yeah. Yeah, over in the East Keith campus, and we moved over here. I retire. I retire from here. I was also worked at the Great Valley Museum for 18 yeah. years before that. Oh, wow. I work here. You've seen a transition here. of the Great I Valley. Yeah. Yeah. So well, this, this has been a big part of my life. Yeah. Except for those years at, at the uh, lab that I mentioned and going back to school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, I, I worked here for 25 years. At the, um, the old Great Valley on Stoddard in the insect room they had that wasp nest up yeah, yeah. they were going to destroy it so i took it down now i have it in my office yeah really oh, wow that's cool so i got and then we took the rocks from out in front and put them out in front of the nursery so okay we're gonna get we're gonna get started so uh welcome everybody and for those of you who don't know me my name is denise god about the bond and um at this point, I don't need to stand next to you because I'm going to be doing the announcements first, and then I'll be introducing you. Oh, okay. I thought it was for this. Yeah, right. Got you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so anyway, um, yeah. So I'm on the science welcome committee. I worked here for 25 years at anatomy physiology lab technician up there and at the Great Valley Museum. When I'm retired, get to do what I want to do now. <laughs> so, <laughs> most of the time. Okay, so yeah, so today is our last science focusing talk for the spring semester. And but I did want everybody to know that we will be back in the fall. And uh, so we want to keep up with what you know going on once we post to get our speakers for next semester. It will be posted on how did you get this to work? Where's the point up here? Yep. There we go. Got it. Okay, so yeah, anyway, so there you go. There's somebody there. Okay. And then uh okay. I think I always keep one in my pocket. No, I'm just trying to change it for the next oh, oh, I can't change it? Yeah, I can't change it right now. Uh -oh. Working earlier. I can't change it here either. Oops. Uh, you know, uh, there we go. Okay. All right. Uh, Matt, the Gasco Area Partners of Science, they'll be having their last talk of the year a week from Friday. And Joe Guerrero, I've known him for many, many, many years. So he was one of the earlier directors of the Great Valley Museum. He was the director when I was working there, started working there. And so he is going to be the last talk of the semester. And his specialty is plants, which could appeal to you. And um, so, yeah, so April 14th, the Air Hall next door, 7 30 p.m. in room 132. Hopefully, we'll see you there. It should be a great talk. He's a very dynamic speaker. And then finally, the Great Valley Museum, uh, several things are coming up. Uh, one thing that's going on right now is the special exhibit here for Thomas Magnuson. You may not know the name, but you know some of his photographs. You, know, you see them, they're absolutely stunning. There's a famous one of a bear, oh yeah, bear on a river, and there's a fish that looks like it's flying into his mouth. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really cool picture. But yeah, so it is a retrospective of 40 years of him being a wildlife photographer. And then um, first day at the museum is coming up on Saturday the 22nd, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. free. 
And then science night at the museum is this coming Friday uh, from 7 to 10. Weather should be perfect for the telescope to be out. And everything at the museum is free that night too, except for the planetarium right here. Planetarium is $5 a person. I think it's four for students. So uh, a little cheaper for students. So yeah, but otherwise it's free. Okay. And we are getting that step down. And then um, Okay, so now I'm going to introduce our speaker, Nick Coban, and he is the Explorer Culture Lab Technician. He is an MJC graduate, A, and of Environmental Horticulture Science Program. He received his Bachelor's of Science from Santa Claus State, and he has been the lab technician here since uh, March, during, March 2020. He came here just a few days before the world stopped when the pandemic stopped, you know, sorry. So I will hand this over to you now, Nick. All right, thank you, thank you. Yes, that is true. I did start three days before COVID. Um, before that, I worked at a pesticide research lab, um, kind of learning my trade and perfecting my techniques as, as far as, uh, uh, eliminating variations and variables and in the way I do things. It was a great experience, but it was time for me to move on. This position opened up and since I had graduated from the department, I felt like I was going to be a perfect fit. And after the interview process, uh, I actually nailed it. So they called me back and uh, that day and asked if I wanted a second interview. And I was like, wow, okay. And once I got the job, they offered me the position. I showed up. This campus was just booming. So many kids. The life was was like crazy. I was like finding my 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 joy, my happiness, all the energy was around. And then three days later, they sent everybody home. And here I was surrounded by nobody. I didn't have any help really because everybody in the department had retired. So it was mainly me learning on the fly, you know, just kind of taking the uh, the hits as they came. And trust me, they did. Um, but nobody was around to really look at them and then <laughs> question what I was doing. I just had to get stuff fixed. And that's what I did. And that's one thing that ag students do is we kind of take uh, the problems that we see and we handle them ourselves. You can call somebody. Normally, though, the ag students accept those problems and take them on firsthand. Um, and that's why I like being part of the ag department as well. Um, so we're going to dive a little bit into uh, the School of Agriculture, but more uh, specifically the environmental horticulture science portion. Uh, how many people have known that we do have a nursery on campus? All right, have you all been there before? All right, I challenge you all to go there. It's a magnificent place. You'll see some of the pictures that we have um, and some of the events that we do. Uh, I'll talk about the classes that we offer um, and some of the other classes that we offer in plant science, which kind of goes hand in hand with the environmental horticulture science program. All right, I also brought some plants today. So I have some questions that I'm gonna ask you, very simple. If you wanna plant, just raise your hand and give me an answer, okay? A little enticement for some participation here. All right, so these are some of the classes that we offer in the Environmental Horticulture Science Unit. Uh, you're gonna start off with your intro to Environmental Horticulture Science. That basically is gonna give you the rundown of how we run this facility. We'll teach you everything from how to do uh, minute propagation, 
um, d through division, all of the different types of uh, ways to propagate, but we'll just touch on those, uh, those topics. We go into uh, identification, we go into how to tape up trees, how to prune um, some of our, our more ornamental trees into uh, like landscape uh, ornaments, you know, the poodling, the lollipopping and stuff like that, that just, it produces a little more of a, a unique plant and more money that's able to be sold in their store. Um, plant identification and usage. We have two courses, a one and two. It's a fall and spring course. Each one of those classes, we have around 200 plants that you'll learn their cultural habitats, their um, native uh, backgrounds, their usage. Um, we kind of go into the depth on some of the um, the cultural benefits of them as well, which is kind of nice. We select plants for you to give presentations on, so you'll find something that you're interested in, and then you'll teach the class on that specific plant. It's real in-depth. We go on lots of walks throughout the neighborhoods and just kind of see what the, the plants are in their uh, landscape. And sometimes you can tell just by looking at the plant in its landscape that they've planted, wow, I could plant it there, or maybe I shouldn't plant it there, determining, you know, on the size or how it looks. Sometimes there's some variables, whether or not they have a broken sprinkler or the dog comes by every day and pees on it or something. It's just, you have to take those things into consideration. But for the most part, you're just looking at um, the, the size of the plant, where it's planted best in its, its, its habitat. Um, like I had mentioned, propagation and production. That one's a real fun class, lots of hands-on experience. And then um, um, field trips to different nurseries and stuff like that to show how other people do their propagation. Um, one of the, the nice places that we are uh, able to go and, and utilize is Zager is Genetics. Zager Genetics is where they create all of the, we'll say specialized fruit, where you get the donut peach, the flavor grenades. Um, I'll show you one uh, specific tree that I got that I brought home just because I've never heard of it. So um, that's later on in the slides. Landscape design, that's kind of where you get to learn the difference between your your ornamental trees, your or your shade trees, your uh, focal points, you know, whether or not these specific plants do well in sun, um, ground covers, you know, you start looking at people's yards and you can kind of tell that they have some sort of an idea of how the landscape works. Japanese maples as a focal point, uh, you know, some um, bushes with some color to kind of accent your, your rocks or whatnot. And then you've got your ground cover and that kind of uh, lets you go into like a, a nice bedding or, or whatnot um, with flowers. Then you can start staging different years uh, of flowers within the seasons, you know, so you can have nice color year round instead of having a, a a lawn or a yard that just looks real desolate in the in the fall and winter. Um, soils, lots of field trips there, going out testing um, lots of soils around here. This place used to be a, an old hospital and uh, army barracks. So they go around and they, you never know what you're going to find. Uh, one of the next things I think would be uh, really interesting is to do the, the, like the ultrasounds so they can actually penetrate the ground and see what's underneath. Might be a little scary around here, but it'd still be very neat. Um, landscape maintenance just more of the same teaching people how to prune their plants uh how to use the tools what are the tools are available you know what's the best whether or not it's using the two stroke 
weed whacker or your 18 volt uh, hedgers, you know, we have a lot of those tools that you're able to just kind of feel to see what you're more comfortable with. Um, landscape and construction and kind of self-explanatory that goes off of those a little more in depth, pouring concrete, um, you know, nice uh, pads stamped and stuff like that. Everything that kind of works with a nice landscape. Good. More classes, the plant nutrient, uh, nutrition and fertilizer, native trees and shrubs, plant pest control. These are all real great classes. They're very in depth. One thing about the MJC experience here is this is hands on. We teach you how to do it. Wait till you get to the four year universities and they'll teach you the theories behind it. Have this as your ear, immerse yourself into what you're doing here. I tell people, I don't care if you're not in the EHS class. If you're in any one of the classes out here, you should be in the greenhouse getting familiar with it. Just being out there. People are out there all the time talking and conversing. You never know. You may meet your your next uh, future employer or something. We, we have a lot of um, customers that come through and i'll talk about that later as as I, I go on about our store and how we're open to the public all right these are our uh, certificates landscape park maintenance landscape design uh, and nursery production those you don't have to go through the whole general ed um, these are just your certificates that you would get through the the department we're also adding um, Coming up, uh, micro tissue culture and um, a, a propagation uh, certificate as well. And these are just some of the pictures that I get blessed with in the morning, you know, coming out, seeing the sunsets, having uh, having an early morning is sometimes the best therapy for me. I get in, I get to do my rounds, see what's going on. I think we had a broken broken sprinkler line there um, shooting water up. So when I came in, it was like a, a nice surprise, but it made for a great picture. Got everything wet and made it look nice. Um, here's some of the classes that we would touch on, uh, hydroponics. Um, we have the students making their own hydroponic systems. Uh, we go through all of the different types of systems, and then we let them pick out which ones they like to 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 utilize, whether or not it's gravity, ebb and flow, or you know your your aeroponics or whatnot. Um, it just gives students a little bit more of uh, going into that next step, you know, the the innovative, um, what's trending, so to speak. And the students love it, along with the uh, the speed of how things produce. The sound of water is just it's so therapeutic. So I, sometimes I don't even have anything going. I just have the water. But uh, propagation, this is our prop house. Uh, we have a 2000 square foot propagation house. These are some of the cuttings. This is actually a bad example. I was pulling it out of the garbage because one of my interns had uh, <laughs> thrown away quite a few uh, pretty nice cuttings. And I was just saying, hey, what's the deal? Um, but it, it, it was still a good cutting. So I thought, hey, I'll just throw that in there. But our propagation house we have, that's a, a heated bed. The idea in the prop house is you have cuttings that have no roots, so they're not able to absorb any water from underneath. They have to have everything intake through their foliage. So you have to have high humidity and bottom heat to stimulate that root growth. So within our prop house, we also carry some staghorn ferns over there, some of those unique plants that are uh, more tropical and won't do real well in our um, our greenhouse because it's too light.
So a lot of the day-to-day -day at the nursery, it's not just transplanting, seed planting, you know, propagation. We do a lot of observation. The best defense is the good offense. So what we do is we're walking down these lines, looking for pests, looking for flowers that may entice us to want to propagate that or breed that plant a little bit more. You know, this is where we're not just going out there and mindlessly doing things. This is a methodical process where you're observing not only the plant, the water you're putting in, the environment, but its surroundings. If you have uh, in the back there, we have quite a bit of ivy. Ivy is a huge habitat for uh, pests, thrips, snails, white flies, scale, I mean, you name it. So we're always watching that back fence and protecting our plants on this side from invaders. So eventually what we end up doing is going and getting uh, praying mantids and things like that and letting our biological control uh, do most of our work. It, yeah, it, it is neat because we'll go through and we'll find uh, the the sacks from the previous years. And, you know, you'll just set them out. And next thing you know, you'll see them all jumping around. I actually raised a, a, a bunch um, in the greenhouse and then let them out uh, this summer or spring. Um, our transition, we do lots of seeds. Um, <sighs> anywhere from our tomatoes. These are all tomatoes on this side. Everything from our perennial flowers, our annual flowers, grasses, uh, plants for uh, our events. They go through this process. They start to sprout. They get to a certain uh, height, and then we start to harden them off. So our, this is what we call our transition. We take things out of our greenhouse, transition them into our hoop house outside. That's our Quonset shade hut. Let them get hardened off. And as soon as they get hardened off, we transplant them up into our number ones and then sell them off. It's a, it's a great cycle um, and a profitable one. Plants are very profitable um, with the propagation method. This is our facility, the aerial shot. The tree line right here that I showed you, that was that previous picture. Um, this is our greenhouse. These are our gutter connect greenhouse. Uh, our prop house right here. Our Quonset shade hut. That was where we hardened off all those plants. We have our laboratory station where we do all of our soil mixing and our plant uh, transplanting and our selecting breeding. Um, so basically what we do is we find the plants that we like, pull them out, and then we'll either propagate it or we'll either do some sort of a, a pollination with them. Uh, the, the line selection is a lot quicker. You plant seed, you get 100 seed out, you start picking from those 100, uh, 10 maybe in vigor you know, the ones that are growing the strongest. The thing is now is people aren't necessarily looking for the strongest plant. They're looking for unique characteristics. So that's where instead of taking the, the rest of those plants and throwing them away, now you look at them for different characteristics that they possess, whether or not it's a shrub that's now it's low growing because everything that's planted from seed is... Uh, it's sexual, it's not going to be the same as its parent, right? So um, that's where you can start selecting this one, it maybe it's is growing a lot smaller. So now if we can keep this smaller and continue to clone off of this, now we have a dwarf, a cultivar, right? So it's, it's kind of a, 
you're not just taking the best anymore. You're taking things that are unique to your situation. Question. Yes. Roy Gravit said that there's a huge rainfall collection system. Does it show in that photo? Uh, no, but so he, he, there's, so we have kind of two systems that are work here. Through here, we have it like a Kathy's Valley. Um, so everything is uh, trenched out through the middle here, and it drains into an underwater uh, reservoir here. And then once the pumps kick on, they pump it over to, we have a, that's a Troy's rainwater collection. So uh, with that, I mean, there's so much you can do with that, like uh, distillation and stuff, you know, where you're you're getting the impurities out. Now you have nothing but pure water with any kind of the, the, the dissolvable solids down below. So neat, neat things going on there as well. Um, yeah, so here's a little rundown. Our area is 34,000 square feet, just under an acre, um, 43,000 square feet is an acre. So it's a nice size nursery, uh, 10,000 square foot greenhouse. Like I said before, it's a gutter connect. Um, and then our 2,000 square foot prop house. Um, all right. Here's my little plug for plant science. A lot of the plant science classes interchangeable with the EHS. Uh, it's just you're not out there doing what we're doing in the greenhouse unless you find it that's something you want to do. Otherwise, you can plant sciences, you know, crops or whatnot. Like so, it's. It's along the same lines, but it's it's a little bit different. My thing is so the Bobany program lead to a two year degree. Correct. Yep. Yep. Uh, both you can get uh, ASs in or AAs. The A the AS is basically where you get um, work experience. So that's your associate of science, and you can get I think it's one hundred and sixty hours. That's where you get uh, your AS. If you just get your AA, then you don't have to do any of the work experience. The, um, the horticulture line is more for like nursery. The yes. horticulture lean a little bit more toward working in agriculture. Um, my thing is, when you go out to get a job, employers will look at your transcripts. The, whether or not they look at your grades to see if you're a 4.0 student, they're looking at what your interests are. I tell people, look, if you have environmental horticulture science, your employer is gonna look at the environmental portion of your degree and say, wow, this person is knowledgeable or knowledgeable of our climate, of our surroundings, and, and is aware. The uh, the science portion gives them the idea that you're intelligent, that you're 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 observant, and then the horticulture. That's the conversation piece. People love horticulture. It's kind of it's 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 an intriguing word. People don't quite know it, and they don't hear it very often. So when some exactly yeah, and it, it sounds neat when you hear horticulturalist so okay um, i want to talk to that person so it's more of like a an enticement that's what i say that's where i try and lure people in uh to the program you know it's not just plant science this is environmental horticulture science all right so this is where our day-to-day kind of just uh, is filled with who knows? It's it's like I said before, sprinkler lines break, but for the most part, we're out walking, observing. Like I said, the best uh, offense is a good defense, or best defense is a good offense. Either or. Um, 
we're going through the our lines, our flowers. We're looking at the possibility of, wow, can we sell this right now? And how much can we sell it? Um, what is this? How long are these flowers going to last? Is this something that we can recommend to people as cut flowers, bouquets? Or is this something that we can recommend people put in a heavily uh, uh, trafficked areas, high sun, high heat, low water? So we're out there just basically taking inventory on all of our stuff observing watching is it grow best here because you can't keep doing the same thing expect different results if it's not growing well here move it do something don't wait for it just to tank on us so these are some of our flowers orchids hellebores um hilarious uh um desert willows mandevilles and this is part of what we do is we walk out there and we are taking pictures of flowers and look, people like this. So let's get more, you know, it's, 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 it's rewarding, therapeutic and fun to tell you the truth. More flowers, um, the insects that come along with it, you know, the butterflies, the moths the hummingbirds, you know, the bees, just all part of it. Clematises, um, hoyas, um, great myrtles, daphnes, hannas. I mean, those are calla lilies, actually. But we have so many different varieties that it just, it's it's kind of on you to find out what your... Uh, likes and dislikes are because we're not going to come in here and have you working and let's say transplanting and and not having well i like to to propagate okay well let's go propagate let's see what you like and we'll work around that so a lot of these people uh, they like to take the pictures of the flowers so go out and let's take pictures of flowers there's a job for that yeah, um, different orchids, kefir lilies, poppies, bougainvilleas. I mean, this is just part of the day to day. Now we got to find out, okay, so we sell more of the, the red. Let's propagate more of the red. Let's see if we can't change the color of the red. Let's see if we can't add a different nutrient to it to see if we can't get it to be a pink or have uh, uh, leach out the nutrients. And now we have maybe, uh, uh, a white with just a little bit of pink on the edges around the flowers. Desert blooms, some of the most beautiful flowers out there. You wouldn't think because of what they're on, you know, pokey prickly cacti. All cacti are succulents, but not all succulents are cacti. It's kind of a, a, a neat way to look at things. You know, it's, it's the same with, with grasshoppers. Um, all grasshoppers are locusts, but not all locusts are grasshoppers. Yeah. Am I going too fast for you all? No, you're no? perfect. Okay, good, good. Question. Uh, is it is not a question or is a question? I'm for Middle East, mm -hmm. so we do a lot of fruit to fruit plant together. Yeah, are you guys doing that? Too? Absolutely, absolutely. So like orange or orange yeah. together, come up with something. Yeah, and one of my friends come up with, uh, I don't know what they call it, lemon Chinese, is like a five finger. And oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flower. Yeah, I, I've seen those. Yeah. Yeah, and for the first time in my life, I saw that. Yeah. So I was wondering that you guys doing those things or not? Uh, absolutely. A anything that is into the manipulation, we're into, um, and that's 
we have like the sour soap and stuff like that. Um, things red orange, yeah, uh, red orange, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. What is red orange? Yeah, all of that stuff. There's nothing that I don't really try and bring in. I know it's there's so much, but when you start for me, if I start selecting, no, I don't want to do that, then I'm missing out because for me. I want to I want to learn it all. This is one of the most yes. Yes, that's why I hit the jackpot when I got hired on here. I was like I get to continue learning and that's the one thing that I've always done is a continued learner. So that's where I challenge people come out. I mean coleus is we're taking coleuses and stressing them with high uh high light um increments you know high uv uh radiation and we're changing the colors we're cutting out the water and stressing them out that way and making them grow smaller and showing different characteristics um, a very interesting plant because you can see the manipulation happen over a small period of time just by having them exposed to uh, uh, high light waves, I mean, we're we're turning these almost completely into this pinkish color. I mean, beautiful plants, and that's another thing that you know they just keep growing different varieties. We're planting coleus from seed now to see if we can't come up with our own varieties. And then next thing you know, we can propagate that. We can patent it, put our uh, name on it, and now we get royalties. Succulent selections, oh, that's a huge craze right now. Um, and all of these pictures are from our greenhouse. So if you're thinking that I'm taking these off somewhere and putting them on our, my slide, these are all from my phone. So uh, if you like them, come out and see us. But this is our African milk trees, our succulent bowls. We got a string of everything you can think of. Bananas, dolphins, pearls uh watermelons you name it but that's that's the new craze right now that's what's trending you know water thrifty easy to take care of and they look neat some of the flowers are amazing as well um along with our uh plants we're starting to introduce more um we'll uh, we'll be careful on this term, we'll, alternative usage plants. Uh, we have a lady who is an herbalist. She's an acupuncturist and she's came in and she's brought us longevity spinach, goji berries, mugwort, lemongrass, turmeric. We have ginger, um, um, different types of toro, um, blueberries lots of things that kind of are antioxidant and just kind of get you uh, thinking about more than one usage this isn't all just ornamental this there's there's alternative uses for some of the plants that you have out in your um, gardens the longevity spinach is is a really good one that's one that i i like to uh promote and push on to a lot of people. Our unique plants and varieties, air plants, carnivorous plants. And like I said, I don't like to turn anything down. If you have something that you're interested in, let's see what we can do with it. Let's see if we can't make these do something. You know, we're already working with things right now that are, uh, I'll show you in the, later in the slides, but you know, we're doing gene manipulation. We're adding in uh, different enzymes from different animals, create different varieties. All right, now let's get to our country store. <laughs> come share the experience. This is where I do challenge you all to just come in and see what we have to offer. These are all of the commodities that our agricultural students have and they, they, they make, they build, they grow, they, 
harvest. Um, we've done everything from broccoli to pop-up extravaganzas to the eggs that we sell on campus, um, even chickens. Uh, we have a, a, a harvesting plant here that we harvest the chickens and we sell them frozen and fresh on um, the west campus or east campus in our store. This is actually our store right here. Um, right, it's, it's a nice looking facility, um, all up to date with our square and uh, taking payment methods, Apple iPay, all kinds of uh, new technology. You know, before we were just running cash and checks. And this is uh, my daughter, she's buying some plants. But this is uh, our store. All right, some of our events that we do, and we get asked to do a lot of events, uh, borrowed plants. I mean, we just got plants back today from the child development um, uh, graduation. Uh, and then there's another one that they're wanting to come out tomorrow and borrow some more. But this is a, a graduation, the MJC graduation. We, we cater that, so to speak, you know, make it beautiful. Um, go to different schools and help them with their gardens, uh, the events that we have here. Those plants were given away to faculty. Um, just, I think it was, they said whoever's birthday was the closest, but table decorations and give them out. You know, people love this. Um, our store, we are open from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, eight to one. So if you're around, come by and check us out. Like I said, all commodities from our uh, agricultural and ag students. I just had to give that plug because that's gonna be one of the questions for the plants. All right, spring sales. We just had our spring sale last Saturday. Huge success. This was last year. We had our ponies coming in last year. Um, the kids loved it. Um, everybody thought it was great. So it was it was a challenge to top it. However, we did. We did very well. Um, this is all of our help. And this is what it's about right here. This is what you can have eight hours of just strenuous work, but when it's over, to see everybody come together exhausted, tired, telling stories, uh, it, it made me feel really um, cool. You know, it, it was a proud moment. Uh, so uh, this year, I, I want to thank every one of those people. It was a good job. Um, this was the busyness, the chaos, you know, we ran through thousands of plants and to have the students there talking with customers, helping them out the whole way, giving them advice, um, it just was, it was, it was priceless. So it was a big success. We do all of our tomatoes. We call them tomato days. Um, squash, zucchinis, cucumbers, lemon cucumbers, uh, you name it. Yeah, you can eat the lemon cucumbers straight off the vine. They're good. Um, but, you know, hundreds and hundreds. This is just one table. We had already taken out all of the tables over here. There's some more in the back, and these are all getting ready to be taken out. And now they're almost all gone. So if you ever need tomatoes, you know where we're at. All right, so here's what you had kind of mentioned about the crossing. So a lot of our stuff we get in, um, we get in from either Dave Wilson, Burchill's, certain areas uh, of the bigger nurseries. Um, Dave Wilson Nursery gets their genetics from Zager Genetics right here. This is one of Zager Genetics uh, creations. It's called the Plary. It's a cross between a plum and a cherry. 
which is very interesting. Um, and if you've seen how they do this, they have these cards where they take the genes uh, of all of the, the parent material and trace it all the way back. So this, this may be 15, 20 years in the making, crossed over, crossed over, crossed over. They have hundreds of trees out there. Out of the hundreds of trees, maybe they only get three that get patented. You know, they have a taste test where you go out there, it's firmness, the way it looks, the way it tastes, how long it lasts on the tree, lots of characteristics. But this right here was what I consider team building. Um, you see all of the help and then all of the trees that we planted. There was over 300 trees and it took, um, I would say, close to five hours with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people helping. It's not an easy job, especially if you have to do it alone. So uh, that's where I encourage everybody, come on out, and just help out. You know, this, like I said before, the stories that people start telling afterwards, you can just stand back and, you know, they start talking and laughing. And, and that's when, you know, all right, everybody's jiving well together and bonding, making friends. Ball plant cell. We'll teach you how to do succulent bowls on pumpkins. We've got skeletons. We decorate our country store. We have um, students come out and give demonstrations on Zen gardens, how to build moss poles, different types of propagation, terrariums and stuff like that. Uh, just a real neat, highly interactive uh, sale. The reason why we don't do so much of an interactive sale on the uh, April sale is because we're so busy. We had thousands and thousands of people, it seemed like, coming through. So it's just a little bit more of a, uh, let's hurry it up. I'll hurry it up. Um, senior day, this is where seniors from other uh, hmm, uh, high schools come to, to pick and choose what they want to do. So we're out here trying to entice seniors, high school seniors. This is the route you want to take. And that's kind of where I go with that, that spiel on the environmental horticulture science. You know, the, the being aware, being an intelligent and, and the conversation piece, you know. So and, and it works a lot of the time because people, they love plants. They just don't know what's out there. How can I get a job doing this? And we'll touch on that here in a minute. NACTA and Field Day, two huge events that we have in the Ag Department. NACTA, this will be our first year having it, but it's basically just like Field Day, except with two and four year university students. Um, so Field Day was this two weeks ago on Saturday. Uh, we had over 80, actually it was 92 students who competed in five different categories. Um, and this is just in the horticulture unit. They have everything from uh, beef judging, milk tasting, uh, portfolios to ag mechanics to um, crops, soils, I mean, you name it, but this is just the, the horticulture part. And you can see the landscape nursery, uh, belt buckle that's for the high individual people as far as, uh, Danuba down South, Fowler, Lompoc, um, Santa Maria, all over, they come to, to compete in these programs. We get great people. We have, uh, ex-farm advisors, master gardeners out here as our judges, letting people know the terminology and why they chose what they chose and why they chose it that way. Uh, it just gives them a little bit more of a firsthand uh, knowledge in industry professionals. Plus, it's a good way to, to meet people and then find out, hey, what are you doing? Now, now they know, oh, wow, I can be a farm advisor. There's, you know, positions as master gardeners. Christmas, we decorate. You can't really tell how beautiful it was because it was in light out, but uh, 
it's kind of hard when I don't, I leave around 2, 2.30, so I never get to see the darkness. <laughs> um, our poinsettia sale, last year we did around 700 poinsettias and they sold out in two days. Um, if you need poinsettias, I'm doing, I just ordered actually yesterday my poinsettias to get in in June so we can have them ready in December. But this is our poinsettia sale, uh, huge success. And we like the varieties as well. So we'll still be doing the varieties as well this year. This is just me showing you a full greenhouse and the problems that may persist with a full greenhouse. What do you think's hiding in there? Bugs, yeah. So <laughs> I gotta be pretty diligent. I'm trying to, to get them before they get me. Uh, and here's one of my methods, is a biological control. I like to let things out in the greenhouse. It keeps me entertained, you know. I, I like to see when, you know, students are transplanting something and you hear a little scream, ah, and it's a ladybug or a praying mantid, you know. It's, it's, it's kind of neat. Um, this is a good thing for me to do. Because if I do this, then I don't have to do this. And that's spraying. Nobody really likes to spray, but, you know, sometimes the well, choice is... Okay. If I ask, do you, uh, you probably do all this without having to use pesticides? Absolutely, yeah. Being, I just don't like, that's where I worked, you know. So I've seen the benefits and I've seen the downfall of using pesticides. Um, that's uh, obviously your last resort, but be diligent in your cleanliness and be diligent in what you do to prevent it and stay on top of it. Because once they come, you know, my first line of defense, if they are there, is I get water and wash them off, hose down the plant first. It's, it's a little bit less aggressive than the pesticides. And plus, you're not killing and trying to kill thousands now you've knocked them off and you're only trying to kill you know a, a minute minority now um this is just a little plug to how long our uh, facility has been um, around modesto jc has been around for a hundred years oh probably 101 now and our um ag department has is one year behind this so we were having our centennial last year, which I've told them, hey, let's go and have a night out at the nursery, have some live acoustic music, have the foundation out there, you know, serving some drinks or whatnot, a little charcuterie board, um, you know, and have some music, have some lights going on, just let people mingle, spend some money. So these are these are actually old pictures from the nursery, and this this picture right here is a uh, little shout out to our photography department. One of my students uh, is taking photography, and he comes over and uh, takes pictures of plants and me and other people as well. All right, so what's new in our greenhouse? Um, well. What's not new? We're always doing something. So it's kind of like pick and choose. What's what's on the topic today? What are you interested in today? I'm interested in edible algae. I want huge cylinders of algae bubbling in the greenhouse where you go in and you just pull the 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 spigot and now you've got a cup of algae you can eat. You know, it's great food source, fuel source, purification, and it looks neat. And that's another thing, of, you know, look towards out of the box. Just because you don't really have uh, a beautiful plant right in front of you, there's still uh, benefits to things like this. 
So we just got approved for uh, a grant for tissue culture. Uh, I wrote the tissue culture grant last year and it just got approved uh, a couple weeks ago. And actually this month we're having the uh, meeting where we're, we talk about the logistics of it. So with that, I put in for climate control systems to basically control the whole for the whole greenhouse on my phone. I'll be able to open and control our vents, um, turn on our cooling fans, dim our lights, um, and even do our fertigation system on my phone. And also with that, I'll be able to track uh, our climate, be able to go back and determine Wow, last year we were only in the 80s this time. Now we're at 95 or whatnot. Can you define fertigation? Fertigation, that's basically we have liquid fertilizer that gets injected into our water lines. So this right here, uh, this is our, what they call a manifold that uh, picks up from, those are filters, but outside of here you would have big reservoirs of whether or not it's the calcium nitrate or uh, an all-purpose fertilizer, whatever you're using at the time. Uh, you can even add in some pesticides if you wanted to for drenches and things like that. Um, all that will be able to be controlled on my phone um, with the, the pulse rates being able to adjust as well. So just trying to keep up with technology and what's new out there. Our LED lighting, that's our next uh, uh, phase in the greenhouse to convert all of our lighting into LED lighting. They've already done it through all of the campus. Now we just need to get it done in the greenhouse. Not only does it look neat, there's lots of benefits on our seed production. Well, the seed responds to a light just like how the human eye does. Exactly. Yeah. You don't go in there and get tired and wears you out and pulls things out of you. It's it's a rejuvenating feeling. You're getting the spectrums that are meant to be absorbed. Um, here is actually one of our prototypes. So we're going to have these lighting, this lighting all down our bed so daisy chain one two three four five six seven um, on these tables and these tables going down all of our uh, different hoops so that's really exciting actually you know to kind of now be able to do different experiments with the the led lighting do they really work um, here's our tissue culture lab this is something that's going to be able for us to uh, inevitably control the market. Um, look at some of these plants that they have. These are on eBay, $7,800, $13,000. With this tissue culture, we'll be able to take those specific plants, make as many as we want, and be able to control the market. We'll be able to let out as many as we want, pull back, and then be able to start trading. Okay, now instead of two rare plants, we'll trade this one rare plant while we have a bunch of them for another rare plant. Now we'll propagate that. Now we've got two. So, and then we just keep that, that uh, method going. Because, I mean, these are, uh, I saw one for $30,000. You know, it... Same yeah, there's money to be made in the plant world. We get a lot of people who come um, to the nursery that work at like the uh, flea markets and they'll buy most of our plants at one specific time, take them to the flea market, triple the price and sell it. Here's what's coming up. So we want to try and create a mutant. Anywhere else, you don't really want a mutant. In the plant world, you embrace it. Um, introduction of different characteristics, enzymes, and things like that. This tree was specifically introduced with um, jellyfish and 
lightning bug enzymes. Yeah, exactly. So one thing that would be neat is once we start to turn down the lights and things stop photosynthesizing, their luminescence start to appear. So instead of now street lights, we have street trees. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And I mean, it's not completely unheard of. Did, did anybody ever hear of the fish DNA in tomatoes? It, it used to be. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it basically it kept them shelf life from cold and stuff like that. So it's not completely out of the, the realm. It's just a matter of. Is it ethical? I don't know. It's not my decision. Um, here's some of the career paths that you all can take. You know, from these, they branch off to as many as you can think of, you know, even down to the plant videographer. Yeah. You don't just have to go out and uh, think that you're going to be working with the plants you can do whatever you want as far as you know advising people what to plant you can uh design things and tell people what to plant you can monitor plants yeah it's just the possibilities are in this if you think about it everything depends on plants so our food depends on plants. Everything depends on plants. Things are made out of plants. Medicines are made out of plants. The air we breathe. Exactly. So it's just, there's nothing that you should look at as a deficiency as far as careers in the plant world. Environmental engineer, horticulture therapist, improve the mental well-being, rehab people, disabilities. I mean, that's huge nowadays. Being able to just go out there and decompress, find your center. I mean, half of the staff here, we could use that, right? You know? All right. So that kind of concludes my speech. I'd like to give a special shout out to our sponsors because without them, we couldn't make this program possible. Dave Wilson, Burchill's California Transplants, Rattle Brothers, Duarte's, and Sager Genetics. So thank you very much. Right. Okay. Are there any questions? We are right at exactly 415. So, anybody have a question before, if you want to say, ask a question. What time were we open? Do you know what our hours were? Okay. Well, y'all answered that one. So, I'll, I'll let you kind of, let's see. Who wants a plant? All right. One, two, three, four. You guys come up here and pick. And I purposely took the names out of the plants. Uh, yeah, I put, you know, that ball, and 